just when you thought it was safe to go back to rock and pop and jazz. Dun, 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 dun. Greetings, one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it. So, as you can tell by the title of this video, this is kind of a twofer. Uh, I have a John Williams update already, a small update to my John Williams collection, just uh, less than a month after I finished my John Williams Week videos here on Tom's Hit Parade. I hope you enjoyed that uh, special series, by the way. Go back and check it out if you haven't yet. Uh, but yes, uh, got a couple of uh, new arrivals uh, related to John Williams. And I also had a little uh, thing I forgot to mention when I was going through my collection. I wanted to give a little bit of an acknowledgement of sorts. And as a little bonus uh, feature on this uh, video, at the end of this video, uh, in case you decided not to, you know, for whatever reason you just missed some of the videos or you just decided not to watch the entire week, uh, you may have gotten a hint from the first video that I peppered all five of the videos with John Williams fun facts. Well, I decided to put all of the fun facts together in case you missed any of them, and so I will present that at the end of the this part of the video uh, as a little bonus special. And actually, the uh, I decided to bring uh, put them back into color. So in the original videos, I had them in black and white. Uh, so yes, they are in color. You'll be able to see them in all their glorious color. Redundancy. Anyway, so yes, let's go ahead and get started on this. It's probably going to be a relatively, relatively short video, but I just wanted to give a little epilogue of sorts to John Williams and uh, don't expect this to be the last John Williams update because I'm sure uh, I just heard about a two disc set of um, special uh, small ensemble arrangements of John Williams music. Uh, it's kind of like that uh, Across the Stars CD that I showed you in my collection. Uh, it's, you know, a, it's a piano, violin, and something or other. But uh, that was a one disc thing and that was not necessarily endorsed or approved by John Williams. This thing that's coming out, it's actually a two-disc set coming out in August. Uh, is, it's called John Williams Reimagined, and it is uh, small ensemble arrangements of John Williams film themes. Two discs full of them, uh, and they actually uh, they ran some of the arrangements by John Williams himself, and including one of them, uh, The Face of Pan from Hook, one of my absolute favorites. I can't believe that's actually going to be on this uh, collection. And he gave these uh, arrangements his seal of approval, so they are basically endorsed by the man himself, the maestro John Williams. So I am really looking forward to that. Um, so yes, as you can see, uh, even when he's not actually actively scoring a, a movie, which I think he is not right now, he's not actually in the middle of doing any movies, not that I know of anyway. Uh, yes, despite that though, John Williams' music uh, continues to be a river air flowing, if you will. Anyway, so, on with the video here. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first one, uh, first CD I'm going to show you is one that I mentioned in my uh, my collection video that it, it was on the way. I had ordered it, but had not received it yet while I was filming the videos. Uh, the two-disc special edition of Dracula. It's, uh, yes, disc two is the original album, uh, but disc one is the expanded uh, score presentation. So. Very cool. It, it had been out of print on Varez Saraband's website for, you know, out of print, period, for quite a while, uh, a couple of years maybe, and they finally got it back in print about the same time that uh, Intrada got the two-disc Jaws set finally back in print after like three years. So I was able to uh, order those uh, two. Kind of cool. Dracula is not necessarily one of my favorite movies or one of my favorite John Williams scores, but it's kind of cool, you know, when there's a two-disc deluxe edition that's right there at retail price, how can I not buy it, honestly? This next one was actually at House of Records, and uh, it's kind of, its connection to John Williams is kind of tenuous, but uh, I'm gonna, I might as well show you what it is. It is um, a 50th anniversary Disneyland uh, tribute album, uh, The Happiest Place on Earth, I think is what it's called. Oh, Happiest Celebration on Earth. And uh, they have, the Disney parks have uh, had Star Tours, which was a Star Wars-related attraction, as well as an Indiana Jones attraction, Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Forbidden Eye, apparently. And this was actually before 
uh, Disney's acquisition of Lucasfilm, but they have musical suites from both of those attractions, Star Tours and Indiana, Indiana Jones, uh, composed by John Williams, but arranged by uh, someone else. Uh, but yes, it is it is technically John Williams' music, even though it's not conducted by John Williams or arranged by him. But uh, yeah, I just thought it'd be cool to have these two little medleys of John Williams' uh, themes from his two most popular franchises on the CD, and it's it's got a bunch of other cool, uh, neat little Disney Disney related stuff on there also. So that's kind of a cool little find to get at uh, to to not expect to find at uh, my local record store. Now this next find, this was just amazing, and it is uh, thanks to unfortunately uh, a deceased music a soundtrack collector who was. Uh, Okay, let me see if I can put this into context for you. Way back, uh, many, many years ago, a few decades ago, I was uh, a member of what was called the sort Soundtrack Correspondence List, SCL for short. And it was a little, kind of like a mail exchange. This, this was before the internet. It was kind of like a, a mailing list, basically, of uh, soundtrack fans. And that's how actually I met a person that I in, in Costa Rica that I remained pen pals with for like, 15 years afterward, but it was run, the SCL was run by a guy named Lucas Kendall, who I uh, uh, has have been acquainted with off and on ever since. Not close friends, but uh, still he's a, he's a cool guy, and he has gone on to become a, uh, well, he, he first turned SCL soundtrack correspondence list into a monthly magazine called Film Score Monthly, which uh, remained in print for many years. I think it it gone out, it went out of print. It gone out of print. Yes, I talk good American. It went out of print um, about ten years ago. I think I could be way off on the numbers, but it's uh, maintained an online presence as Film Score Monthly, and it turned itself into a record label as well. So that was uh, very cool. I've always been, and I've always seen you know here and there um, credits on the backs of CDs. You know. Uh, reissue soundtrack reissues produced by lucas kendall and there was uh, the the star wars uh official soundtrack anthology original soundtrack anthology four disc box set from 1993 the liner notes were written by lucas kendall so it's i've kind of always had this little sense of pride as i guess the wrong word but just kind of like this little sense of recognition it's like oh lucas did that so uh it's always been a, a kind of i've always, always been very happy that he has parlayed his fandom of soundtracks from his teenage years into what's basically become a career. Anyway, uh, long backstory, probably unnecessary, but uh, Lucas Kendall uh, recently did a uh, held an uh, CD sale of the soundtracks that uh, soundtrack CDs that belonged to a late uh, soundtrack collector who had been a long term a long time member of the SCL from I think way back in the SCL days, uh, and they, I guess they were friends and. Uh, uh, this, a gentleman, the deceased gentleman, gentleman was named Tim Knapp, and I never met him, I never knew him, but uh, Tim Knapp's family was wondering what they were going to do with all these, this huge pile of, you know, huge uh, collection of soundtracks, and uh, one thing led to another, and Lucas decided to sell them uh, on his website to fellow collectors who would uh, appreciate them and value them, and the money would go to the family. So I was able to get in on that, and at just the right time, because I found some grails on here, and I found them for probably less than half of what I would ordinarily of where what I would pay for them otherwise, and they are pretty expensive and out of print, obviously. Uh, but yes, um, the Amazing Stories collection. I mentioned these when I was talking about my favorite John Williams TV themes. Yes, three volumes or three anthologies of the music from Amazing Stories. Uh, the the nineteen eighties sci-fi fantasy anthology series, executive produced by Steven Spielberg. That was Anthology 2. And here is Anthology 3. Yes, they were all in not completely spotless condition, but way better than I have any right to complain about, honestly. Uh, but yes, Steven Spielberg got uh, top-notch actors on uh, on the show, and this was before, you know, before it was cool for big time actors for you know movie stars to be on television you know now tv is is you know it's not considered beneath a film actor to be on television lots of great acclaimed movie actors uh, are on tv series but back in the 80s they wouldn't do that but yes top notch actors uh, top notch writers uh, 
he got top-notch directors for a lot of these shows. Uh, Joe Dante directed a couple of episodes, I think, and uh, I couldn't tell you who else did them. And uh, along with all that, he got top-notch composers to do the, uh, the scores for these episodes. Uh, John Williams did the main theme for the Amazing Stories TV series, and he did two uh, scored two episodes. So yes, out of six discs, um, only two of the scores, totaling maybe... 50 minutes, probably less than an hour, you know, so, I mean, to buy all this stuff for just that little bit of John Williams, but it's not just the John Williams. I mean, John Williams was the main reason I bought these, uh, just to have, you know, those scores, but James Horner, Bruce Broughton, Georges Delarue, Billy Goldenberg, uh, Danny Elfman, uh, who else? J uh, Jerry Goldsmith even scored an episode, uh, Craig Saffin, David Newman, uh, David Shire, I might have already mentioned him, Arthur Rubenstein, John Addison, Leonard Rosenman. I mean, the the, the uh, composers that you got, Alan Silvestri, for these shows was just amazing. I mean, just, I mean, leave it to Sp Steven Spielberg has had the clout even back then to reel in the big, big names for, uh, for the, his TV series. So yes, absolutely thrilled beyond words to have those and to have had gotten them for a very, very good price. Uh, I won't tell you how much I paid for them, uh, but yes, fantastic. And I got a couple other uh, non-John Williams scores as well out of that set. So uh, it's only, uh, you know, just sad that uh, I, you know, we had to see the passing of a uh, soundtrack collector uh, for me to get these. Um, yes, uh, prostate cancer, I believe, was what he passed away from. So uh, yes, very, very sad. Um, Condolences to Tim Knapp's family, uh, but great, great appreciation, uh, appreciation beyond my ability to verbally articulate it for being able to get those CDs. Uh, and then moving on from there, uh, yes, th those were the new acquisitions that I got, and take a quick uh, drink. But I also wanted to, uh, you know, speaking of a deceased soundtrack collector, I completely forgot to mention that several of the soundtracks, about six or seven of them, that I showed you in my CDs, uh, soundtrack CDs uh, collection video, were also courtesy of a soundtrack collector who had passed away in the last couple of years. Uh, his name was Richard McDougall, and I just happened to, upon um, his sister, uh, her name was Anne, uh, had a Discog store where she decided to, you know, sorry, same thing with uh, Tim Knapp's family, she had absolutely no idea what to do with all of these. Must uh, must have been hundreds and hundreds of uh, soundtrack CDs, a lot of them still sealed. So yes, this guy was a collector. Um, and so she put started loading them onto Discogs, and uh, she was a new seller. I'm not sure if I was her first sale, but I was one of her first sales. And it's actually uh, happened that uh, a couple of times recently, I've taken a chance on a Discog seller with zero feedback and was quite... Um, uh, quite oh actually that's another one I can show you so uh, I'll I'll pause the video in just a minute to show you that one I oh, I forgot about that one uh, but yes uh, took chances on a couple of uh, zero feedback discog sellers and was quite satisfied but anyway um, so yes I wanted to acknowledge Richard Mc, the late Richard McDougall and his sister and Ann Williams and guess what her husband's name is John yes weird weird coincidence but yes the uh, Soundtrack collector named Richard McDougall. His brother-in-law is John Williams. Not the John Williams, but a John Williams. But anyway, um, unfortunately, Anne's Discog store is uh, shut down. A couple of, a month or two ago, it shut down. I don't know if she was able to, if she found a bulk buyer for all of them, or if something happened. I don't know. Uh, but I, I hope she's okay. I tried emailing her and no answer. But uh, anyway, just wanted to acknowledge some of the CDs. Thought I'd show you six of them that I got. Um, thanks to thanks, loosely, to the uh, unfortunate passing of uh, Mr. McDougall. Uh, among those were The Poseidon Adventure and The Paper Chase. This is a uh, uh, half and half, two scores on one disc. And that was, and, and yes, I showed these in my collection video, but I just wanted to give acknowledgement where acknowledgement is due. Uh, the Man Who Loved Cat Dancing is another one. And a guide for the married man. Those were all. Uh, those were all actually on the Film Score monthly label. 
So yes, a, a, a connection to Lucas Kendall. Honestly, the entire film score universe uh, in some way kind of tends to uh, redirect to Lucas Kendall. It's kind of weird. Anyway, <laughs> okay, maybe I'm exaggerating, but uh, anyway. Another one, Heart Beeps, which I got from Anne, uh, courtesy of uh, her late brother-in-law, or her late brother. Uh, the Cowboys, the expanded edition of Cowboys, and the expanded edition of 1941, a two-disc set of those. And uh, I'm going to pause the video here and show you the one other recent acquisition I got. So yes, this was uh, the other one that I got from the other uh, Zero Feedback Discog seller. The Star Wars Trilogy, the special edition soundtracks in the book, you know, the, the hardbound, squarebound, I guess you'd call it. I don't know what you call those uh, forms. But yes, uh, Return of the Jedi, Empire Strikes Back, and Star Wars. Yes, they are the... Uh, Hard book bound, which I don't really, I'm not crazy about these uh, because every time you take them, uh, slide them in or out of the sleeves, you run the risk of getting scratched. But I uh, got these in this slip case, and it's a nice, nice, um, good quality slip case, still sealed. And I paid $25 postage paid for this entire set. So, yes, it's that was one of those, you know. The price kind of looked too good to be true, and so I wasn't sure. Oh, actually, I might as well show you, show you the... Uh, those of you who might not be aware of these, first of all, great uh, liner notes talking about uh, the history of the scores. Probably uh, liner notes on par with the book from the uh, uh, original soundtrack anthology set. But uh, this is very cool, and... Again, I hesitate to do this just because you know every every in and out of the disc from the booklet risks scratches, but I had to show you. Yes, laser etched with uh, images on each of the discs, very very cool. So, uh, and and all all six of the discs, all three uh, sets are laser etched with a different image. So yeah, twenty five bucks postage paid for the. Uh, a complete set of these and yes I have the original presentations of the soundtracks that are on the 2018 Disney Records remasters and I've got the uh, original soundtrack anthology which is expanded but still has mostly the album edits but yes I wanted the uh, you know this kind of the the, uh, the other good uh, set of Star Wars soundtracks and the uh, transfers you know, the, the, the remasters are a little bit superior on these compared to the original soundtrack anthology. But uh, oh, one thing I forgot to mention, I think I was I was going to mention it, but I forgot to. The slipcase, I think, is was uh, only available as a promotional, um, or, you know, the, the, the set in a slipcase was only available, I think, as a promotional thing. So that makes it even more cool and collectible. And yes, uh, you can, I think you can tell, foil um, embossed the... Uh, uh, all this, the stuff, the writing and symbols and stuff on there. So, yes, a, a very, very cool set. I was quite thrilled to get that, and especially at the price I paid for it. So, pretty freaking awesome, huh? Now, let's go ahead and uh, break away here to the um, the full reel of John Williams fun facts from my John Williams week. Enjoy. Before he started scoring movies, he worked as a Hollywood session musician. His piano skills can be heard on the soundtracks for such movies as West Side Story, To Kill a Mockingbird, and Some Like It Hot, and TV series including Peter Gunn, which won the first ever Grammy Award for Album of the Year in 1959. Steven Spielberg is by far his best-known and most prolific collaborator, but not the only director who's called on his talents more than once. He scored five movies for Chris Columbus, four for Mark Rydell, and three each for Martin Ritt, Robert Altman, and Oliver Stone. When he won the Best Original Score Oscar for Jaws at the 1976 Academy Awards, he didn't have to walk very far to accept his award. He was just off stage in the orchestra pit, conducting the band for the ceremony that year. Convenient.
His son Joseph gained fame in the rock genre as the on-and-off lead singer of the band Toto since 1986. That's him singing their hit ballad, I'll Be Over You. And his grandkids, Barbara and Ethan Gruska, released two albums as the folk-pop duo The Bell Brigade in the 2010s. Besides the NBC News and Sunday Night Football, he's written the themes for many other TV programs over the years, including the detective series Checkmate, the Irwin Allen adventure shows Lost in Space, Land of the Giants, and the Time Tunnel, the Steven Spielberg-produced anthology Amazing Stories, and the Star Wars miniseries Obi-Wan Kenobi. His father Johnny was a jazz drummer with the Raymond Scott Quintet. You've probably heard adaptations of their music in Warner Brothers cartoons. He also played on the radio for Benny Goodman, Kate Smith, and Tommy Dorsey, and on movie soundtracks such as On the Waterfront and From Here to Eternity. He made a cameo appearance in Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker as the Kijimi bartender Oma Trace, an anagram of the word maestro. The bar was decorated with 51 props, one from each of the movies for which he had to that point received Oscar nominations. Between 1972 and 2011, he was nominated for two of his scores in each of eight Academy Award years. That's more double nominations in the same category than any other composer. But he won the Oscar in just one of those double nom years, 1978, when Star Wars beat out Close Encounters. He's received honorary doctorate degrees in music from Berklee College of Music in 1980, from Boston College in 1993, from Harvard University in 2017, and from the University of Pennsylvania in 2021. He's also an honorary brother of the Boston University chapter of Kappa Kappa Psi, a fraternity for college band members. In 2003, the International Olympic Committee bestowed upon him their highest honor, the Olympic Order, probably for composing the themes to no fewer than four Olympiads, the first of which, 1984's Olympic fanfare and theme, is still being used as the title music for Olympics TV broadcasts. Although the 1968 TV movie version of Heidi earned him his first Emmy Award, it became infamous for interrupting the final minute of the East Coast telecast of a pro football game, during which the Oakland Raiders scored two touchdowns in a come-from-behind victory against the New York Jets. Jets fans were not happy. For two reasons. While about 95% of his film scores have been released commercially, with many getting expanded reissues in recent years, there are a few that surprisingly remain unreleased, including The Sugarland Express, his first film with Steven Spielberg, and The Rare Breed, a western starring Jimmy Stewart and Maureen O'Hara. His two brothers, Jerry and Donald, followed their dad into the session percussionist gig, and you can hear one or both of them performing on several of John's movie scores. And his son-in-law is composer Jay Gruska, whose work includes the TV series Lois and Clark and Supernatural. In 2022, he was one of the last two people knighted by Queen Elizabeth II during her reign. It was only an honorary knighthood, since he's not a British citizen and therefore can't be given the title of Sir, but it's still pretty cool. In 2016, the American Film Institute presented him with its annual Life Achievement Award, the first person to be given that honor who wasn't an actor or a director. He's also the only composer with more than two entries on the AFI's list of 25 all-time best film scores, with Star Wars being number one. Well, I hope you enjoyed that special bonus clip reel collecting all my John Williams fun facts in full color. But that'll do it for today's video. Be sure to like it if you liked it. Before you go, drop me some feedback in the comment section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon to catch my future videos, and hit my username to browse my old videos. Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.